Hey everybody, Joe here. I am back again, and it is the first Wednesday of the month of August. You already know what that means. It's time for pickups. What did I buy in the month of July? Well, watch and find out. Alright, I've got a pretty big stack of games here in front of me. I am actually not showing every single game that I bought this month because if I did, we'd be looking at probably a half hour or more, possibly even closer to 40 minutes because I bought a hell of a lot of stuff. Mostly Atari 2600 games, that's why I'm going to be doing an updated collections video sometime later this month. I essentially doubled my Atari 2600 collection, possibly better than doubled. I have somewhere around 112 games now for the Atari 2600, if I'm not mistaken. And most of them were bought this month. About, let's say, about over 60. However, I do have a lot more other stuff to show you. Some flea market finds, some thrift shop finds, some other stuff, and I'm going to get into those. So, let's do this. Starting right off the bat, this month, month of July, that just passed, there was a Prime Day. Amazon did their annual Prime Day thing where they do all their deals, and I did buy one video game brand new. That is a copy of Rocksmith for the Xbox One. As you know, I am into playing guitar and bass, and... I'm a bit out of practice, so I wanted to get my chops up, and this looked like a fun way to do it. Also, I thought the whole uh, USB guitar cable was kind of neat. I have not played with the game yet, but I've actually plugged the uh, USB cable into my MacBook and, you know, just jammed out a little bit with GarageBand on uh, my Mac. And it's a neat cable. It works on the computer as well, so... I'm sure I'll get some use out of the cable, and I'm sure I'll check out the game because there's actually some decent songs on here I'd want to learn to play. Also, not sure, I think it was during the month of June, uh, Vintage Video Game Geek, I think it was, did a video on games based on Mazinga Z, the, uh, in, uh, here in the US, the cartoon anime, whatever you want to call it, it was called Transor Z, and uh, there was a game adapted for the Genesis uh, Maze and Saga Mutant Fighter, I believe it was called. It was uh, based on like a later version of Mazinga. And oh, there was also one for the Super Famicom, which is more like the Mazinga that we all know and love as Transor Z. And it looked cool in his video, so I figured why not pick it up, check it out. It wasn't too expensive. So there you go. Next up, I'd like to show you a couple NES games that I got this month. One of them I did buy online, the other three were flea market finds. And this one that I bought online, it's one that is getting up there in price. I did not pay anywhere near what it does go for. I think I paid 60% of its going price. That game is Felix the Cat, which is actually a really, really good game. It's one of those uh, sort of valuable games which are very decent. So, glad to get that in the collection. Now the rest of these NES games are Flea Market Finds. This is one I actually wanted to get for a while. Not because it's good, but just because of the uh, novelty of having it. And that's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We all know the story behind this one, I think. You know, why is it desirable? So, I'm not even going to get into that. And then these two, again, pick these up cheap. These are actually, well, this one's in decent shape. This one, not so much. But these were, like I said, flea market finds and fairly affordable Cabal, which I've heard is a fairly decent game. And the other one is Destination Earth Star. You know, just a couple things for the NES collection. Next up, I have a stack of games. A system that I never bothered with before. I think I had one game for it and that was the original Xbox. You know, a lot of original Xbox games are going to be backwards compatible onto the Xbox One. They, a lot of them are already backwards compatible onto the 360. So I figure, why not pick a few up? Because these things are really cheap. 
you're still gonna find these for roughly around three bucks each if you know where to look. That's pretty much what I paid for all five of these, six of these. So let me show you these. Got Dead or Alive 3, Tao Fang, Lord of the Rings, this is uh, Fellowship of the Rings, Hitman 2, Doom 3, and Namco Museum. All these are complete except for Namco Museum, which is missing the manual, not that I need it for any of those games. And the discs aren't in bad shape at all. And yes, I'm now going to be collecting a little bit of the OG Xbox. About time, right? Last games I'm going to pick up and show in front of the camera are three PlayStation 2 games, which again, these are things thrift shop and flea market finds that I've been picking up for really cheap lately. Uh, this is AMF Extreme Bowling. It is sealed. So, got that. Got a copy of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. I have the other two Kingdom Hearts PS2 games. I actually started playing the first one not too long ago. Figure might be cool to do a video on one of these days, especially with the remaster out. And also, lastly, Crazy Taxi. I know a lot of people love this game. I don't know if they love this version of it. I mostly hear people talk about the Dreamcast one, but I've got a copy for the PS2. Since I bought so darn many Atari 2600 games, I've got my MacBook right in front of me on my lap. I'm going to put up two pictures of the lots that I bought. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen these pictures already, I believe. If not, I believe I also posted them to the Atari H Facebook group. And I'm just going to read off some of the names while I put these pictures up on my screen. Kangaroo, Barnstorming, Keystone Caper, Sky Jinx, Star Master, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, Skiing, Kaboom, Freeway, Mega Mania, Chopper Command, Spider Fighter, Enduro, Sequest, Laser Blast, Fishing Derby, River Raid, Stampede, Adventure, Checkers, Star Raiders, 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, the Sears version, Grand Prix, Space Jockey, Demons to Diamonds, Night Driver, Berserk, Omega Race, Wizards of War, Gorf, Unal Runner, Blueprint, Carnival, Pac-Man, the Sears version, Speedway, the Sears version of that too, Super Breakout, Beanie Bopper, Circus Atari, Combat, Slot Racers, Warlord, Space War, Skydiver, Othello, Human Cannibal, Video Olympics, Backgammon, Space Attack, Super Challenge Baseball, Ventures of Tron, Armor Ambush, Astro Blast, Dark Cavern, Airlock, Reactor, Empire Strikes Back, Demon Attack, Firefighter, No Escape, Fathom, Atlantis, Cosmic Arc, and Riddle the Sphinx. And that's the whole list that I copied down. There might have been a couple games that I missed. I'm not so sure about that. Needless to say, there are a few doubles in this slot, or these two lots that I bought, and I will be flipping them. Probably not for very much, so I will be probably posting a listing or something like that on a my Facebook page somewhere in the future regarding that. Also, I'm going to close off with a pair of game consoles that I picked up this month. First of the two game consoles that I picked up this month, again, on the Atari 2600 kick, and this is a bit of an odd duck, so I kind of thought it'd be very cool to have in my collection, and that is a Sears Video Arcade 2. If you're not familiar, there was a version of the 2600 released only in Japan called the Atari 2800. And apparently somebody at Sears who has something to do with Atari liked the design of it so much that they brought it over here as the Sears Video Arcade 2. Instead of all your switches, they have push buttons. And there's, interestingly enough, a joystick and paddle pair of push buttons right here because the controllers that came with this system actually had to hunt these down separate from the console. These controllers have the paddle integrated into the joystick. The joystick is very comfortable, ambidextrous friendly. This one is a bit rough, it's got a little paint on it, and there's a lot of play in this stick, kind of like a well-played, well-loved N64 stick. I don't know if this is going to work, but the other one I have is actually very tight and seems to work 
or feels like it's gonna work pretty well. I have not tested either of them out yet, but I have tested the console out with a traditional 2600 joystick and it does work just fine. This last thing I'm showing you, this is a bit heavy, but uh, see this bag here? See that logo on it? You already know what's here. This carrying bag contains, well, it contains an OG Xbox. It also contains one Duke controller. One transparent green S controller. And, oh, another Duke controller. The remote control. And of course, you got your power and AV cables. And the system itself, right here. Ugh. If you've never played with one of these, they do weigh a freaking ton. Got myself an OG Xbox here. Got a little wireless doohickey for the remote control. Not that I want to use this as a DVD player. I've got enough things that play DVDs. But this, it's pretty neat. It does work. I have tested it. For some reason, my copy Halo 2 does not work, but it works on my 360. I know, weird. And all the other games I tried out do work just fine. And it's a very cool system if you've never played one. Not my favorite of that generation. My heart still belongs to the GameCube on that. But still, I have every console that came out in that generation. What is that? Number six? Yes, the sixth generation of gaming. Got them all now. Thanks to getting an OG Xbox in the collection. And there you have it. That's everything I bought the last month. No, it's a lot. Went a little overboard, without a doubt. But I did get some really, really great deals, so I cannot complain one bit. Hope you've enjoyed watching the pickups. See you next time. Take care.